To build the life you want, you must be able to envision it and then become the type of person worthy of living that life. By paying attention to the moment-to-moment -moment actions you choose and the identities you vote for, living your ideal life then becomes a matter of clarity and presence. The clarity to see what your ideal life looks like in your mind's eye and the presence to focus on what actions you can take right now to make it a guaranteed reality. You've likely clicked on this video because you're fed up of living a lifeless, mundane existence. You're fed up of going about your daily life, convinced this isn't it. Surely there must be something better out there. In short, you're fed up of being fed up. Wake up, hit snooze, stumble to work, sit there for eight hours, talk to the same colleagues you hate, rot your muscles by sitting all day, stare at a screen, check the time, stumble back home, eat comfort food, stare at a screen, drink a beer, sleep do it all again. There comes a point where you reach a crossroads. You can either continue on the soul-destroying path you're currently on, or you can put all of your energy into building a life you're not trying to escape from, a life worth living. Just imagine what you could achieve if you put all of the energy you're currently putting into living a life you don't like, into building a life you actually want to live. Of course, I painted a grim picture to get your attention, but without understanding how to design your life, you'll constantly have other people designing your life for you and you might not like what's on their vision board. Admittedly, I'm not a millionaire sat in front of you who's achieved everything he wants to in his life. No, I'm a young man who's felt just as confused and fed up as you. But for the first time in my life, I understand clearly what I want and the exact life I want to build. Okay, I'm still on the journey there, but I'm gonna share with you how I intend to make my dream life a reality and how you can do exactly the same. Before we begin, I should warn you, this video isn't going to include any stock footage or fancy video clips. This is as straight to the point and as actionable as I could possibly make it. And at the risk of coming across pretentious, I want you to actually make notes during this video. Because everything I've ever learned about life design is included in it. Only watch this video if you're genuinely interested in building your ideal life. Because all of these things I'm about to tell you, I'm going to do as well. So let's get started. Together. Point one, diagnosis. Firstly, you need to understand the areas of your life you're unhappy with. Do so by using the nine areas of the wheel of life. Take a piece of paper, either while watching this video or after, and draw a circle. Then split the circle into three triangles and then nine parts. Title three of the segments, health. Another three, work. The last three, relationships. Within the health segment, title the three segments, mental, spiritual, physical. Title the three work segments, growth, wealth, mission. And the three relationship segments, romance, family, friends. Now go through each segment and rate it on a scale of one to 10. One equals you're failing terribly in this area and it's pretty much non-existent. 10 meaning you are excelling in this area and no further improvements need to be made. After you've done this, then circle the three main areas areas of interest to you with the lowest scores. Maybe it's romance, mission and wealth. Now keep those three areas in mind when we're doing the next part. Ideal ordinary day. Forget about the current job that you dislike. Forget about the restrictions on your time. Open your mind to freedom and envision, without hindrance, how you would like to spend any given day of your life. You can think of two ideal days. The first can be a realistic brainstorm of how you would like to spend your time now. And the second ideal day can be a time in the future, maybe five years from now, of how you would like to ideally spend a day in your life. Now write that out as a routine on a piece of paper from the time you wake up until you go to bed. An ideal weekday for me would look like wake up, walk, meditate, right? Work out like a savage beast, eat a nutritious meal and listen to a Spanish podcast, learn, community, wind down, walk, read, pray, meditate or sleep. If this got your juices going, don't stop there. Now start to envision your ideal ordinary week with as much nuance and as much detail as possible. Bear in mind that when you're doing this, you want to incorporate the three segments that scored lowest on your wheel of life activity. Consider, what would it look like to have those segments score higher? What can't I not include in my ideal life? What would I do if money and social pressure didn't matter? Do I want to work locally or globally? Number two, set your goals. Whether you like it or not, you are hardwired to work towards a goal. Without a clear, identifiable and worthwhile goal, you are lost. Distracted by whatever flashes red and sparks emotion in you. You need to have a clear aim in order to strike a bullseye. 
After creating your ideal ordinary day and ideal week, you've now got a clear detailed vision. Now you need to set clear and actionable goals which are aimed at bringing your ideal life into reality. I have a video all about how to set goals. It's quite short, so feel free to check that out now or after this video. It basically summarizes all the information I've learned from neuroscientific and psychological podcasts. But in summary, make your goal as clear and as actionable as possible whilst keeping the why behind the action in mind. Keep to a time frame of six months and be ambitious. Also set it as a celebration goal with one key sentence on the end. In six months time, I will celebrate having done X whilst enjoying every step of the way. Your ideal life is gonna require time and dedication to come into existence. So to keep you motivated along the way, you'll need to break the time chunks of your bigger goals into smaller time chunks so you can track your progress. Take your three, four, five year plan and break it down into years, months, weeks, and days. Lastly, ask yourself this question. How could I guarantee that I don't achieve this goal? That will prevent you from missing the target. Three, build the identity. So far, we focused on outcomes, what you want to achieve. But this next part is most crucial because without changing your identity, you won't stand a chance at bringing your ideal life into existence. It's not enough to just set goals. You must develop the identity of being the type of person who is able to live your ideal life. Behaviour change occurs on three levels, outcomes, processes and identity. Outcomes are about what you get. Processes are about what you do. Identity is about what you believe. Setting the outcome to get ripped is a vision. Building the process of going to the gym each day will bring you results. And building the identity of becoming the type of person who prioritizes their health and is consistent will bring you unfathomable growth and sustainability. Behavior that is incongruent with the self will not last. So, the goal is not to run a marathon. The goal is to become a runner. The goal is not to write an article. The goal is to become a writer. The goal is not to become financially free. The goal is to become an entrepreneur. Your habits reflect how you choose to embody your identity. Interestingly enough, the word identity comes from the Latin word essentis or assentis. I'm not sure if it has tits on the end, which means being and form and also from the word identidem, which means repeatedly. So your identity is literally your repeated beingness. So one, decide on the type of person you want to be, and two, prove it to yourself through small wins. Because you cannot just wake up tomorrow and decide to be someone new who embodies actions you've never done before. Here's an analogy to explain why. Imagine someone that you love, your mum, your dad, your girlfriend, or your sister. Now imagine that a psychopath has tied them to a chair and is holding a gun to their head, and that he demands that you believe he is Jesus Christ, or he will pull the trigger. Could you believe that he's Jesus Christ? Probably not, but the least that you could do is lie. Now imagine that he asks you to do the same, but he changes a glass of water to wine right before your eyes. Now could you believe he's Jesus Christ? Probably. So you cannot change your identity just through wishful thinking. You need to stack evidence in favour of your identity that you've chose to create through your habits and actions. New identities require new evidence. If you keep casting the same votes you've always cast, you're going to get the same results you've always had. If nothing changes, nothing is going to change. Decide on the type of person you want to become and then vote for that identity every single day with your actions until it becomes second nature. What type of person would be capable of living my ideal life? Four, build the skill set. To be considered the best in your industry, you don't need to be the best at any one thing. You need to be good at a variety of complementary and rare skills that your industry values and that your competitors lack. In addition to building the right identity, you want to develop a stack of skills that will propel you to where you want to get to. In a career lens, think about the type of career you would have in your ideal ordinary week and then work backwards from there. Perhaps you want to spend most of your time coaching young people in your local community. Well, then you'll need to develop the skills of charisma, communication and psychological knowledge. Maybe you want to spend all of your time making videos and building a YouTube channel. Then you'll need to develop communication skills, knowledge synthesizing and cinematography know-how. Whatever desired field is in your ideal ordinary week, ask what skills would someone who's excelling in this field have. Then take all of the necessary courses available to you and gather as much knowledge as you can so you can start to hone the necessary skill set. Develop a relentless drive to become one of the best at what you do. And as Naval Ravikant says, keep refining what you do until that becomes true. 
If you're stuck on ideas for skills to develop, then Danko's idea of the evergreen skills are a really good place to start. Speaking, writing, selling, marketing. Stick to the routine. So now you understand the life you want to live. You understand the identity that you need to create. And you also have an understanding of what skills you need to develop in order to bring this into existence. Now you need the routine of excellence, which you can let mold you. Now synthesize all of the knowledge that you've gathered so far about the ideal life you want to live, the type of person who is capable of living that life, and the skills that you need to develop into one solid routine that you can follow each day. For example, for me, I want to do exactly what I do now, but get paid for it. So my ideal routine that I do now looks like this. 7 to 11.30, write, edit videos, work out, eat, learn, community or shallow work, walk, read, sleep. Do not skip the routine more than once. Trust me. All of the times I've felt depressed or dissatisfied in my life is because I've drifted out of the routine for one reason or another and I feel like I'm not progressing. In a way, that's the beauty of having the clarity of understanding the life that you want to build. When you're not working towards it, you feel like you're wasting time, which fuels your productivity. Of course, be careful here. Remind yourself that it is the pursuit that makes it meaningful, not reaching the destination. Also understand that you have no idea how long any of this is going to take to come to fruition. But that shouldn't bother you when you're on the right trajectory. Sometimes nothing happens and then everything happens. To help you along the way, frequently check in with your purpose, your vision board and the reasons why you're doing what you're doing. Develop a North Star which is bigger than you, a bigger cause that you're serving. I have another video which gets into the more esoteric and spiritual explanation for this that will actually help you along the way because it really Really helped me when I discovered the idea so feel free to check that out. With the fear of mundane existence at your back you should have enough fuel to keep the fire burning. I'd also recommend you check out this five minute video up here which explains a visualization technique that will really aid you along your way. It only takes six minutes a day for you to do and it's really been changing my life so feel free to check that out as well. Here are a few principles to keep close along the way. When you get tired learn to rest not quit. Don't promise what you don't yet have. Everything is figure outable. Inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. It always takes longer than you think, even when you take that into account. Never show people how hard you're working. It feels scary because it's unfamiliar, not because you're incapable. With the courage to begin and the discipline to persist, victory becomes a matter of time. The magic you're looking for is still in the work you're avoiding. A quick final note about dealing with other people along your journey. If your ideal life involves doing something you've never done before that none of your friends are doing, then people will continuously comment that you're doing the wrong thing. Well, perhaps not everyone, but not a lot of people will understand what you're doing. They'll look at your decision to quit your job and get your dream life off the ground with confusion. They might even laugh, but don't react. Don't get angry and make it you versus them. Human nature is wired to be this way, to follow the beaten path, and anyone who ventures off into a path less travelled is ridiculed, laughed at, and it's always been this way and it will always be this way. But as long as you can see your vision and your direction, other people's comments don't matter. In fact, it's not even their responsibility to understand your decisions and your direction and your vision. And never take advice from someone who you wouldn't trade places with and never take direction from someone who's not going where you're going. And then finally, when you do start living your ideal life, don't throw it back in your doubters' faces. Bring as many people up with you as you can, and for those people who expend no time or effort to understand what you're doing, gift them infinite compassion and a smile. Don't be arrogant, don't become arrogant, and don't make it all about you and a fancy headline. Work in silence. You've got your own back. I'm rooting for you, and so is God. Lastly, in the initial stages, don't lose hope. When you feel lost, don't fret. You're not lost. You're just early in the process. You're doing this forever. You're playing an infinite game and doing work that really matters in the world and that stands the test of time and building a life that is genuinely worth living does take time and focus. So there's no need to rush, but still have a sense of urgency. Develop high commitment and no expectations and ask yourself, right, now can I work for five years without reward? Of course you can. Now go get it.